Howdy AP Precal, it's Ms. Kosh, and we are now, we finished the two three notes, and now we're looking at the two four notes, but it's all gonna be done in one day in my class, so here we go. Um, so just a reminder, if I have um, the same base, and my then those things are, are multiplying, I can add the exponents. Um, so b to the m times b to the n equals b to the m plus n, or if I have, another way to think about this is I have five x's and then three more x's, and if I have like, I'm multiplying x times itself five times, and I'm multiplying x, that times x times itself three times, which is a total of eight, which, anyway, hopefully we know these properties. Um, two to the x times two to the third is gonna be equal to two to the x plus three. Um, and the power property, if I have a power to a power, I multiply. Um, so two, the cool thing about this one is two to the x um, to the third is, also, is two to the three x, but it's also equal two to the third to the x. So three times x is still three x. So sometimes, and we're gonna see later in this video that this is gonna be really helpful. That we can write, um, you can see that this two to the three x is equivalent to eight to the x, which is gonna be helpful. Um, the negative property, if it's negative, it moves it from the numerator to the denominator. Likewise, if it's one over x to the negative two, that would be equal to x to the positive two in the numerator, so denominator to the numerator. Um, super. Okay, so here we go. On this one, we're looking to see the horizontal transformation. So what did this do? It moved us to the left two. Okay, what did this one do horizontally? Well, this was a horizontal compression by a factor of three. Um, so, or another way, yeah, it's a horizontal compression by a factor of three. This one, it's Let's see, this is also going to be equivalent to 2 to the third to the x, which we just talked about, which is 8 to the x. So it's a horizontal compression, but it's also as a slightly different parent function. It goes up faster than that one. Anyway, I, I think I, I'm going a little too into the weeds. Um, this one is going to be a horizontal um, a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. So, um, but it could also be written as nine to the one half raised to the x power. Well, nine to the one half, it's the square root of nine is three. This is three to the x, which is kind of cool. Um, that's a side note, that was a side note, here we go. Um, another one here, this is, this can be written as, um, or this is a horizontal, it's a shift, <laughs> it's going one unit to the right. Yeah, so shift horizontally to the right. Okay, here we go. Um, so what we're going to point out here is that sometimes we, well, we can see a horizontal translation can be equivalent to a vertical um, dilation. So, and I've seen this sort of idea show up in IB also, so that's kind of fun. Okay, so the horizontal translation, what did this do? This took our graph and it moved us left three units. Okay, so what is its vertical dilation? Well, we can rewrite this as f of x is equal to two to the third times two to the x, which is eight times two to the x. So the vertical dilation is it's a, it's a vertical stretch, vertical stretch by a factor of eight, which is kind of cool. Okay, so we can, this is equivalent to eight times two to the x. This one here, what are we doing? Well, we're shifting this one, um, we're shifting this one to the right two units. Okay, well, what does that mean? That means this is, this is three to the x times three to the negative two. Three to the negative two, I ran out of space. This is our g of x, sorry, I switched letters. g of x is equal to three to the x times, well, three to the negative two is one over nine. Okay, so this is one ninth times three to the x, or however you wanna write that with dots or parentheses, but basically this is multiplying by this. Um, oh, keep in mind while I'm thinking about it, if I, have, um, if I have two times three to the x, um, okay, let's look at this table for just a second, and let's compare it to six to the x, because I often will see kids be like, oh, two times three is six, this is six to the x. Let's see what happens when I plug in zero, one, two, and three. Okay, um, this is my x value. If I plug in zero, three to the zero power is one, times two is two. If I plug in one, I have three to the first is one, it, da, 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 da. three to the first is three, times two is six. 
If I plug in 2, 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. If I plug in 3, 3 cubed is 27 times 2 is 54. Okay, now I'm looking at this 6 to the x. So if I plug in 0, I get 1. Already it's not the same. Um, if I plug in 1, a 6 to the 1 is 6. Plug in 2, 36. Plug in 3, that's 216 if I remember correctly, but I'm kind of tired, so there we go. Um, notice the only place they're equivalent is if x is 1. And we don't like to set things. So the short answer is, is 2 times 3 to the x, is that equal to 6 to the x? No, absolutely but not, positively not. Only if x is equal to 1, which there's infinitely many numbers where it is not true. Okay, I digress. Okay, coming back here, looking at this one, we have 4 times 3 to the x plus 2. Well, so what does that mean? That means we have 4 times 3 squared times 3 to the x. 3 squared is equal to 9 times 4 is 36. So this is 36 times 3 to the x. Oh, and so what happened here? This had a horizontal translation well, it took, depends on what we start with as our parent function. We had a, a vertical stretch of 4 and a horizontal shift left. So we, it was a vertical stretch of 4 and then shift left 2. But it also can be written, this k of x, could also be written as 36 times 3 to the x. That would take, so what I'm writing here is I'm assuming that my parent function is y is equal to 3 to the x. Um, this one would be a vertical stretch of 36. Okay, so vertical stretch. Oh, this was a vertical stretch of 1 ninth or a vertical compression of 9. Vertical, I forgot to write that down, compression of 9. This is a vertical stretch of 36. Super. Okay. Um, we're, we're just going to go ahead and finish. On this one, they're also pointing out, we've kind of talked about this, that b to the c to the x, we can rewrite those powers. Okay. Um, I have talked about this, and let's just jump in and do the problems. So if we say we have y to the um, 9 to the 2, y equals 9 to the 2x, well, we could rewrite that as 9 to the second to the x. Let's see if that matches. 9 squared is 81 to the x. Is that an option? Sure is. Is this wrong? Yeah, because um, this is, you could also have rewritten this as y is equal to 3 squared to the 2x, which would then be y is equal to 3 to the 2 times 2x is 2 times 2 is 4 to the 4x. So that's also equivalent. Is that an answer choice? No. What about this one? Um, 9 to the x times 3, no. This would be, um, we could rewrite this one if we wanted as um, 3 to the 1 times 3 to the 2x, because that's 3 squared to the x. Uh, um, we could rewrite that as 3 to the 2x plus 1, but that's not equivalent to anything we have so far. Um, 18 to the x, oh, this is what we talked about too. Um, this was this idea, so don't start multiplying weird things like that. Or, no, I don't know where they got 18. I guess this 9 times 2 is 18, but 9 squared is definitely not 18. Um, that's a good distractor, but yikes, don't, don't guess that one. That's like the worst of the bunch. Anyway, the correct answer is D. Um, okay, let's look at the next one, which would be equivalent to this. Um, so I see 3 and I see 16. And Okay, well, what do I know? I know that this is equal to 3 squared times um, 2 squared to the x. So I could rewrite this as, I, I'm not even looking at those right now, and, but I'm going to just play with this for a second. This is 3 um, squared times 2 to the x squared. So maybe I have 3 times 2 to the x, everybody's squared. I don't know. Um, did they rewrite any of this? Um, let's see. Oh, they're looking at x. Um, so this one right here. Oh, there we go. Um, when I see something over 2, that means it's the square root. So the square root of 16 is 4, so that's going to be equivalent. And so we just have the, this is the right answer. We have um, 9 times 16 to the 1 half power raised to the x. 16 to the 1 half is 4, and that's 4 to the x. So that's what we started with. 
Um, anything else? This just kind of crazy. This three, it was nine, and then it just all of a sudden becomes three, and then it's 16 to the 2x. That's not the same thing. Um, this one, oh, this is a decent distractor, except the nine all of a sudden morphed into a three. So that's kind of crazy. This is the correct answer. Okay, the next idea uses this, um, and I see this a lot in IB, and I think it's super fun. Um, and so they want us to factor 9 to the x plus 3 to the x. Well, we know 9 is equal to 3 squared. So this is 3 squared to the x plus 3 to the x. Well, if I rewrite this, I should have given myself more space. You know what? I can still give myself more space. Okay, if I rewrite this, I now have 3 to the x squared plus 3 to the x. That's equivalent to what came before. Notice, this is a great place, you don't have to do this, but this is a great place to do a u substitution. So we're going to let u equal 3 to the x, not me, but we're going to let u equal 3 to the x. I think I'm funny, you guys. I've said that for years, and I still think it's funny. Um, and if I do that, I can write this as u squared plus u. Well, then you may notice that I could factor out a u, and I'm left with u plus 1. But we can't stop here because they didn't tell us, they didn't write the problem in terms of u. They wrote it in terms of me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, they wrote it in terms of x. So we have to come back here and say this is 3 to the x times 3 to the x plus 1. Okay, and that's factored. They didn't set this equal to anything. So when they say factor, so 9 to the x plus 3 to the x would be equal to 3 to the x times 3 to the x plus 1. Oh, sorry. Cool. Um, let me do one. Let me make one up really fast. Um, if I have um, 25 to the x plus 10 times 5 to the x um, plus 5 squared, and I want to factor that. Um, hopefully I made up a decent problem just now. What I notice is I have powers of 5 or things that multiply. That, um, so this is 5 squared to the x plus 10 times 5 to the x plus, well, 25. And what I can do is I can let u, not me, but u equal 5 to the x. And this is, um, well, this was, I didn't rewrite it, but this is 5 to the x squared. Um, and I can say that's u squared plus 10u plus 25. And hopefully you might recognize that this is u plus 5 quantity squared, which would then be 5 to the x, because that's u, plus 5 squared which is not a very helpful problem because five to you, if we set this equal to zero, we couldn't get anywhere. But maybe, what, what should I have done? To make this a better problem, if I had made this a minus, now that's something that if I had, if I had set this equal to zero, which I never did, but if I had set this equal to zero, I would get down to this five to the x minus five equals zero, which tells us five to the x equals five. Well, this has an understood one, so x would equal one. Anyway, um, I think those are kind of fun, and we'll talk more about this as we keep going. All right, good luck. Go study.